for group. There you go. And I'm recording now. Thank you, Bo. Bo is always my, that's why we have Bo work with us, keeping me sharp. My name is Rod Santomasmo. I'm the founder and president of the Massimo Group. The Massimo Group is a leading coaching and consulting organization. In fact, I'll go out and tell you, we are the leading coaching and consulting organization throughout North America, specifically in the arena of commercial real estate. And one of the good fortunes we had is being able to coach not only seasoned veterans, market leaders, mid-careers, but also new to business brokers. And for that, I've asked one of our coaches, or, or one of our original coaches, one of my original clients, and very successful, very well-known, Mr. Bo Barron, to discuss how to thrive as a new to business broker. Bo, good afternoon and welcome. Good afternoon. Thanks for having me. I'm really excited about this. And for all of you that are joining us, especially if you're new to the business brokers, or if you employ them, hire them, train them, whatever the case may be, uh, you're in the right place and you're going to get a lot out of the next hour. And so we're, we're thankful and grateful that you joined us today. Well, Bo, thank you very much. And I'm, I'm looking at two screens here because we have another screen where you can ask questions. Now we have several ways for you to get engaged today. Uh, Bo, is there a social media way to get engaged? You're, that's your thing, not mine. You tell me. There is. If you're on Twitter, one way you can engage with us during this webinar is to tweet out using the hashtag N2B webinar. So the letter N, the number two, the letter B webinar. N2B webinar. And if you don't know what a hashtag is, then you probably don't know what Twitter is, and you can just forget what I just said. But if you're on Twitter, I'll be monitoring that during our, our time together today, and, and we'll be able to engage with you there. Okay. Well, already we're getting some comments from some of the Chris saying, great, I could, I could tweet. So here's what I want you to do. First thing I'll ask you to do is, and we'll get to everything, is I want you to go to the question and answer box. You'll see it below my video and, and, and Bo's video as well, a Q&A box. Just type in that box, please. I'll see whose name it is. The number of folks in, that are attending this session today. If it's just you, type one. If it's several of you, type one, two, three, four. I just, we just know the size of the audience, particularly today. This is actually our second webinar on this topic today. The first one was sold out. So we'll see where we are. So great. Thank you, Richard. Thank you, Michael and Colin and Robert and everyone else who's throwing in the answers here. Okay. Perfect. Paul, you got you got three there. Fantastic. You got four there. Okay. Perfect. Thank you very much. We want you to be engaged. If you're calling in, I know we have some folks, we have well, folks calling in as well as listening on the webinar. If you're calling in, you'll get the radio voice of Bo Barron and myself, and we'll try to share with you what's being visually shown on the screen. So we appreciate that. But there's going to be another way we're going to do this. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to, we're going to light this candle and get started. Let me, um, let me share a screen for you. And we'll go over here. And, Bo, give me a thumbs up when you – oh, hold on. When you see my, my PowerPoint. Thumbs up. I got there it. Go. Great. Okay. So there's the – okay, there's the Photoshop, Bo. Now people are seeing the Photoshop of us. And in real life, ooh, we look different. <laughs> you look good. You look good. I mean, it's me. I look different. So um, – and of course, if you don't know who Bo is, if you don't know Bo, Bo knows everything, um, go to BoBaron.com. Great content that we share the content with the Mosmo group. Go to the Mosmo-group.com. Free content, great resources for you to download and propel your business forward. That's what we want you to do. So let's get started. So here's, here's how it's going to work. We want you to get out your cell phones. Believe it or not, those on the webinar Get out your cell phones. For, for those old crusty guys like me, it looks like that, right? And what I want you to do is I want you to text. I want you to, let me move my video here for a second. I want you to text to the number 22333. Again, text to the number 22333, the word Massimo, M-A-S-S-I-M-O, okay? And, and capitalize that if you can. I'm going to do it as well to show this works, okay? Hit send. What's going to happen is, you're going to be asked if you want to join a meeting. You confirm that meeting. So you're going to just how you're going to engage with us by going and saying Massimo, and they'll confirm. So we're going to be taking polls throughout, throughout the, the process and the campaign to see where you are in your practice so we can adjust our presentation to you. Really important. So now we're live. I see we're live on my phone. I see we're being shared there. So here's what we're going to do. You answer questions A, B, C, D, and E, and sometimes, and we'll start with a fun question. Now, the first session was an overwhelming response 
I won't tell you to what side, but let's see how you do in this first question. So A, B, C, or D. Oh, you know what? I didn't clear the results. Now you can all see the results. Sorry. Okay. You're going to see those results. So give me, the, give me your response to these. You know, what's better? Duke basketball, Kentucky basketball, anyone but Duke or anyone but Kentucky. So just type in A, B, C, or D, and I want to see what your answers are to that. Not that I'm going to skew these. Oh, wait, what? There wait, it is. We started off in the wrong. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Thank we you, started Ken. off. <laughs> now, hold it. There's a rumor oh, that Bo has family. Today. This is my crowd. <laughs> This is, this hurts me, folks. And look, we got scores of folks. We got 50, 60 folks on the line and more. So participate because these, these, this is fun. I know this. But later on, we're going to get some key questions. We're, we're going to shift our presentation to your responses. So this is fun. Look at that. Now, that is here's, what, here's what I'll share with you. Okay, the first group was obviously much brighter and much better looking because they over rally said Duke, Duke, Duke. Okay, this group, this is the Bo's family on the line. <laughs> <laughs> Bo, what do you think about the? What does, it, what does this tell you about our audience today, Bo? Uh, I've got a warm fuzzy right now. Incredibly intelligent, great basketball minds. I mean, this is clear that we've got we've got a fantastic group on the line right now. <laughs> hey, the, the fact that you take the time to invest in yourself, regardless of your erroneous flavor towards college basketball, <laughs> I, I'm it's a privilege talking to you today. <laughs> I think when we put out the recording, though, later on, we will put out the first group's recording that overwhelmingly <laughs> went to the other side. <laughs> so let's move forward. Just now let's get a little more serious if we can, okay? And I apologize for these. Uh, these I didn't clear out these, these things, and I shall. I need to know, are you a new-to-business broker or are you a broker owner? Because as Bo said earlier, you know, a lot of folks go through the program we're going to share with you because that's their training program. Brokerage owners, Bo, is this correct? Did they invest in their guys this way? Absolutely, we've got a number of, of firms of good size that send all their new to the business folks through our program. Okay, perfect. Now we're seeing this group based on a short sample. Again, guys, and I'm, that's my New York side, guys, not my y'all. Participate, let us know who you are and what you're doing so we can craft it towards you, really important. Okay, so overwhelming. Most of you are new to the business. Uh, I hear that specifically. Now, you received some, some uh, folders from our last webinar. Don't let that influence you, but let us know where you are, where you are as far as your tenure as a producer. Now, just if you're new to the business, brokers, don't, don't answer these questions. I don't want the brokers to answer. I want the, the folks that are out there new to the business. How long have you been in the business? Again, three months, six months, nine months, a year, more than a year. Give me some reply. This is an important question. We really got to get your feedback because this is going to help us understand where you might be in your career. So I'll give it about another five, 10 seconds. <clears throat> and Bo, we're seeing, this is interesting, Bo, but what would you consider as someone that's new to the business? Is there a tenure to that? And what would you think? Yeah, you know, it's really 24 months and below is what we would consider a new to the business program. Anybody with two years or less. And I did just get a comment uh, from Richard who's saying part of the screen is cut off. So they're having a hard time. It's, the first one is three months. The second one is six months. And then nine months. I'm sorry. Months. There it is. That's much better. There it is. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Richard. Thank you. See there? See, you know, you're engaged. You should tell us, you say, guys, fix it. We fix it. So that's, you know, now uh, I'm obviously Richard must have been that Duke fan because he was astute to say, let's, let's, let's fix this guys. <laughs> okay. That's the last joke about Duke and Kentucky. Bo and I have been North of for, Bo, it's got to be, easily 10 plus years now. And that's always yes. how we start conversations. <laughs> so fantastic. Let's, let's, let's continue to move forward. I'm going to have to move somewhat of these screens so you all can see what we're talking about here. Um, here's the thing. I see where you are in your business and most of you thinking, look, I'm just going to get through the first year, second year. If I could survive that initial period, I'm on my way. I'm on my way. Just allow me to survive. I'm saying time out. Bo's saying time out, right? Time out. Why just survive? The goal is not to survive in commercial real estate. The goal is to thrive, to be a market leader, to move your business forward. That's the goal. We want you to thrive even though you're in your early part of your career. And that's what we got to be. And that's the mindset we need to get you in. That's the mindset we need to get you in. So the next question I'm going to ask you is very simply, what do you think the survival rate is? Realistically, 
what's the survival rate of someone that's new to the business? I, I can answer that question uh, pretty accurately because we have the, the fortune to deal with almost every national, international company, low, scores of regional companies, independent firms, and we see where they are and they tell us, look, this is the issues we're having with our new to business brokers. And both these, these, dare I say, dare I say, this group is more in tune with the market than our last group. Is, is, I, I, is that fair to say? I, I think I think you're right. Yeah, you, you got it, folks. You are sharp, and I'll, let me share with you why. Because on average, believe it or not, only 30% of new to business associates, agents, call them as you may, they survive, just survive, forget thrive. They survive the first year. The rest, for a variety of reasons, which we'll see what you think, they can't. That they, they can't move forward, and therefore they're, they don't make it. They don't thrive. Imagine that, three out of 10, almost one out of three, right, actually make it. We gotta fix that, we gotta fix that, we gotta move forward. So here's what I want you to do. I want you to tell me why you think, why do you think these folks don't make it? I know there could be multiple answers here, <clears throat> but let's just give me one of your most consistent answers. What do you think is the number one reason new to business folks don't, don't make it that first year, okay? Is it support, is it resources, is it knowledge? Is it a mentor? Is it a partner? And it's interesting to see how these answers are different, Bo, than the first group. They, they are. Mm -hmm. We're getting different. And this is great. We put the two groups together. We see what, the, what the, the market's telling us and where we have to go. Okay. And I appreciate the 15 of you so far that voted. Again, we want you to vote. Get involved. Get on your phone. Text to 22333, the word Massimo, and then enter your answers from there. Okay. So here we find out. Most of you say, hey. I don't have a mentor, I don't have a partner. We're gonna talk about that specifically, the options there um, and the benefits of mentors, partners. Um, consistent cash flow. We're gonna share with you today specifically how you can monitor and, and then create a consistent cash flow in your first year, absolutely. In fact, Bo's gonna share with us the specific metrics you should be using every week to track progress, which is, we're just gonna give those to you, tell you what they should be. So that, that's pretty cool as well. So let, let's move forward. So here's the issue. What, which one is it? Do we know? Sure we know. We know what the answer is, obviously, right? It's going to be all the above, all the above. The fact that there are limited resources for new to business broker. There, there, are, there are a lack of support. There is obviously an inconsistent cash flow. And unfortunately, a lot of brokers still today, I mean, back when I was so fortunate, when I became a new business broker, Bo, I'm going to admit this for, for a time here, it's 2015, in uh, 26 years ago, um, I had a mentor, and my mentor had me do specific things to be successful, and, and I learned a lot from that, because I see in today's marketplace, a lot of business folks, they don't have mentors, seniors, you know, partners, so it's, it's, it is all the above. So, so Bo, um, I guess the next question is, where are the keys to success, and what I'm going to do, Bo, is first, I'm going to share what we found to be key success in, in our program a little bit, and then you're going to share, if you can, you know, some, some five essentials and give them, give, give them the, the information they need to, to put in action immediately today. So let me start and share with you all right away what we look at as far as keys to success and what we focus on in our programs are, number one, obviously the basics. We've got to have set goals. We've got to get metrics. We've got to be held accountable. We've got to look at your pipeline. Pipeline is a killer. We'll talk about that today, as a matter of fact. Um, your value proposition, what are you gonna say? Prospecting, your letter, your phone calls, your qualifications, all that stuff, right? How you prospect. We look at your market and how you understand the market. You know, you could be a market leader. You could be a market expert even at your young age. You absolutely can. You absolutely can. I will share with you some insight in the Mosmo group. We get a lot of calls from mid-career and seasoned veterans, and they'll say to us, those darn kids are taking our market share. Those darn kids are figuring out. They're, they're creating a presence, right? They're articulating what's going on. I can't, I, I can't do this. I can't compete. Imagine that. We're getting that today because new to business brokers are figuring out how to position themselves in the market to get opportunities. The essentials. We'll talk a little about the lease. We're not going to get into it far into that deal. We'll talk about the deals and certainly your platform, your database. Bo will share with you what your platform should look like today. Uh, and, and certainly, let me move the screen. You know, building that market presence we talked about, being that resource, 
and then setting goals and moving forward. So, Bo, that's what we generally talk about in your program and our program we work on together. But today we don't have all that time. In fact, we have about 45 minutes and we're on, we're on pace for our last call. So let's let's talk about what we're going to talk about today. Bo, I, again, I did it again, Bo. Okay, I did it again. I just, I'm too quick, too quick I am. But Bo, this sounds good. This looks good. The question is, does it work? So Bo, prove to me it works. Well, that's, that's the quintessential question. That's why we're here. Is, is this something that can work? And here's what we know at this point. For a couple of years now, we've been doing, creating, tweaking this new to the business program. There are well over 100 people that have gone through. And here's what we know. At the end of this six month program, the new to the business brokers that graduate out and complete the program, their average new pipeline value. So deals in their pipeline that weren't there when we started, average is $165,000 of value to them after just six months. It's an incredible metric and it proves that what we're doing is working. Now, let's put this in a little perspective what that means. Pipeline value or opportunities you're working on. We're not, we're not, we're, I'm always, I'm very, always in full disclosure. We're not being trans, we're being completely transparent here, excuse me. That's pipeline value. It doesn't mean they close the deals. That means they've, they secure the opportunities. They're working on the opportunities of $165,000 of value. A lot of them close deals. Some of them are working on the deals when they graduate six months after the opportunities are working with us. But here's something you all should know. In 2013, at least, still waiting for the 2014 number to come out, the average broker broker grossed grossed $105,000 in the United States. That is the number. So imagine as a new business broker exceeding that in pipeline value in your first six months, or your next six months, your next six months, no matter how long you've been doing this. So it works. It works. So we're going to share with you today specifically things you can do on your own to make it work for you and move forward. So, Bo, let's talk about these five Ps. What, where are they? Well, the first thing is planning. How do, how do you know, how do you project where you wanna be? How do you set goals and, and execute a plan on how to get there? Uh, that's the planning aspect. The second thing is the pipeline. How important is the pipeline? How do you even know what you're working on, what stages they're in? How are you able to slice and dice that data to see if there's holes in your pipelines, problem areas? Rod's going to talk a little bit more about that here in a minute. The third thing is all about prospecting. And let me just tell you this. This is what a new to the business broker should be focusing on almost all of their time. Prospecting, 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 prospecting. The fourth thing is platform. What, what are the tools that you use to make you more effective and efficient as you're prospecting? Um, so we'll get into that here. And the fifth thing is the partner. What three specific partners do you need as a new to the business broker to ensure or at least enhance your chances of great success in this business over the long term? So those are really the, the five things that we're going to cover here over the rest of our time. Okay. So let, let, let's get into it. I, I agree with you completely. The, we can't talk about everything, but these five keys are essential. So let's talk about planning. What are the, what are the elements of planning we need to discuss? We're going to talk about three things specifically. The first thing is goals. What goals should the new to the business broker have? I remember being a new to the business broker, November 2nd, 2004. I just got out of the Marine Corps. I joined my dad's firm. I've got a laptop on my desk, a couple of pencils, a legal pad, a telephone, and I didn't have a clue what to do. If you would ask me what my goals were at that, on that day, I had no idea. And so that's the first thing. What goals should the new to the business broker have? The second thing are the metrics. What are we tracking to ensure that we're on the road to accomplishing those goals? These are very specific, important metrics. And we're going to talk about that. And the third thing is accountability. How important is that? Why do we want to do that? So let's break down this goals um, aspect of the planning very specifically. And we'll share with you the three goals that we have for the new to the business broker that goes through our program. The first one is time management. How should the new to the business broker spend their time? Do you know? Do you have a clue? Well, we do, and, we're, and I'll break that down even more here in just a second. This, the second thing after time management is prospecting. What, what kind of prospecting goals should the new to the business broker have? And then the third thing is the new to the business broker pipeline. We keep talking about pipeline. What does that actually mean? That means 
can you produce consistent deal flow? Can you continue to find opportunities, win that business, and then go and fulfill it? Take all these opportunities through your pipeline to the end point where you essentially cash a check. How do you do that? So here are the three goals that okay. we have. Yeah, there we go. So what's, the, what's this? These are the three goals that we have for the new to the business bro, uh, new to the business broker. The first thing is weekly time management, creating that strong pipeline and Im implementing a, a targeted prospecting campaign. Um, and if you'll hit the next slide, I'll share with you the metrics um, that we do. Because the big question is, how does the new to the business broker actually spend their time? Now, this is based on six months of working a minimum. Hear me say minimum of 40 hours a week. If you work 40 hours a week for six months, you're going to work approximately 1,000 hours. And this is what we found is the most uh, productive way that a new to the business broker can spend their time on a weekly basis that produces actual results. And the first thing you'll see is italicized and it's canvassing, eight hours of canvassing a week. Now, if you're an office broker, you canvass differently than you are if you're a multifamily broker or an industrial broker or what have you. Um, if, uh, if an office broker walks into an office building, he may hit 40 canvassing um, opportunities in one building, whereas a multifamily broker would, would see 40 different properties. What we're talking about here is actually getting your feet on the ground on these properties so that you're prospecting on these owners later. You've got firsthand knowledge of the property. You know what shape the roof is in because you've seen it. You know if there's deferred maintenance because you've seen it. The second thing is spend 10 hours a week on the phone prospecting. And you may think, oh, that's a lot. That's a lot. It's two hours a day. If you break it down to two hours a day, it really doesn't sound like a lot. But 10 hours a week on the phone prospecting. Now, look at the next one. Research. Just five hours. And let me tell you what the normal new to the business broker does. He spends 10, 15, 20 hours researching a week because he or she feels like he needs to know more. But in reality, what they are is they're afraid of the phone. And so we're going to teach you how to spend your time. And I remember, I remember that first day on the job staring at the phone thinking, I don't even know who to call. And if I did, I wouldn't have a clue what to say. But we get into all of that. Next is four hours. Well, well, and, well, and, well, and, and, and more importantly, we're going to talk about that today. Don't worry. We're going to talk about phone calls and approaches and so forth today. So go ahead, Bill. Absolutely. Four hours networking. Three hours eating alone. Now, there was a great book written by a guy named Keith Ferrazzi called Never Eat Alone. And his premise is that we should always be networking, always be connecting with people. What we're suggesting is, is there might be just three hours a week that you eat alone. The rest of the time, you should be with somebody. You should be networking, prospecting, connecting with people, building relationships. Two hours meeting with prospects. That's why you're doing all that prospecting in the first place is to generate meetings and then maybe three hours of administrative work and five hours of miscellaneous work, just anything else. That's how the new Okay, so let me be clear here. In their time. So you're saying right now, just whether someone just decides to get a mentor, senior coach, whatever, you follow these metrics on your time as a new to business broker. If you're an owner and say, okay, well, how should I have my new broker spend their time? You have shown that this, 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 these factors and this part of the calculus creates success. The, if this is one of the three entries. Is that correct? It absolutely does. And look, if, if you okay. do all that research, you're going to be really, really smart. But if you're not prospecting, you're not going to make any money and you're not going to stay in the business. So this is, <laughs> the, this is the amalgamation of different things. This, this is what produces the best results the quickest. Okay, perfect. So let's get on to, we talk about you got a prospect, you got a prospect. So Bo, how, how much do we have to really prospect. What we're looking for is 4,000 prospecting touches over the course of the six months period, six month period. And this is how it breaks down. 40 canvassing attempts a week. And I've got a question from Kevin that says, what do you consider complete canvassing? It really depends wildly on what your specialty is. Okay. You may be talking to tenants if you're office. Uh, if you're a multifamily, it's just getting there and then trying to get a hold of the owner later on. It really just depends. Canvassing attempts 40 a week, dials, 100 dials a week. Now, remember, we're telling you that you need to be spending 10 hours a week on the phone. That's one call every six minutes. That's completely doable. 
And those 100 dials produce 20 connections. Now here's the obvious difference between a dial and a connection. If I call Rod Santomasimo, I pick up the phone, I dial his number, I'm listening to the ringer and I get his voicemail. That's a dial, that's not a connection. I did not connect with him. But if I get him on the other side of the phone and we have a conversation, I've connected. So the difference between dial and connection is did you talk to the person you are actually calling for? And then we want two meetings a week. And if you're doing that kind of prospecting, if you're putting those many prospecting outputs out there, you should be able to generate two meetings a week. And that's the whole purpose of the calls, the connections, the canvassing attempts. All that we do is to generate face-to-face -face meetings. Okay, so from a prospecting perspective, we're really pushing that, because it's a huge lever, folks. What Bo is sharing with you is the fundamental variables that we find minimal, minimal variables of what you need to do to move your business forward. And let me also share with you, obviously we, we work with a lot of mid-career and many seasoned veterans, market leaders, you know, some of the top brokers in the, in the world. And believe it or not, the dials, 100 dials, they still do it. Or at the very least, someone on their team may do it. But our top producing brokers, they still make the dials. The 100 dials a week, they know they got to hit. They understand that. So if they're hitting it and they're, they're successful where they are, you have to be as well. Okay, Bo, that's two. Two goals and metrics that they could take away today and put into action right away. Let's get to the third one. And that has to do, and I guess if I can control my board here, um, with the pipeline. Let's talk about the pipeline and these different variables. Yeah, the pipeline goal is we're shooting for the goal for every new the business broker that goes through this curriculum is to produce $50,000 of new potential pipeline value by the time they end that six month period. And I, I share with you the average was 165 earlier. The goal is 50,000. And I will tell you this, that 100% of the new to the business brokers that have gone through our program and completed it, taken it seriously, actually done what we prescribed for them to do, 100% of them have hit that goal, $50,000. And you break that down over the course of six months, that's approximately 2,000 potential gross income, new potential gross income in your pipeline a week. The weighted average of about a thousand. That's generating approximately three new prospects a week, which you should do if you're making that volume of calls and having those meetings. And we ideally would would have one exclusive a month, whether that's being hired as a tenant rep broker, being hired on paper, whether you're listing something or being hired to complete a task for somebody. We also just got a question: uh, Will you get these slides? You absolutely will. You're going to get an email later on today from Rod going to have a recording of this webinar so you will have all of this and uh, that's important because you can take a look at these slides and start planning your next weeks to reflect this type of time management and you will see success and and we just saw the difference between the, the crusty veteran myself and the current guy Ving Bo he could do that multitasking answering questions going to that that's incredible so but the point here is this is the minimum, folks. This is the minimum that we're looking for, that we're, we're, we're expecting for you as a new business broker to hit. Could you hit more? Sure you can. But do these minimum to start out. Let's build winning streaks. Let's always build winning streaks. And for those brokers out there, those owners, managers, that is key. You want to build winning streaks with your new to business brokers. You don't want to discourage them. Set some lofty goals, build the winning streaks, create more goals. So, Bo, now we have the, these these targets that you should hit. So help me reflect on, 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 on the whole process and give me some, some social proof, I guess. Yeah, well, take a look at what Ryan said. His point here is that commercial real estate does not come with a manual. It's real easy to get into commercial real estate, pass a test, get your license, find a broker who will hire you. It's very, very difficult to stay in this business. And that's because there's not a manual. And when I started, nobody handed me a manual. What I did is I walked into my father's office and I watched what he did for two years and it was great learning experience. And it was literally two years before I felt like I knew what I was doing. What we've created here is the playbook of how you start quickly, reach great success and stay long-term in this business. Okay, perfect. So now we've given you all specific metrics to hit, to track on a weekly basis. You have the, you have the plan. You have the plan. Oh, these are the targets. Move forward. Let's talk about something else, though. Let's talk about, um, Bo, do you know what this is? Bo, let me see. Bo, do you know what that is? What, what is that, Bo? Oh, that's that an is? empty money clip. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's that's what we call the Massimo money clip. Never went empty, of course. But the money clip is where we all start in January, mostly, we know, at zero, unless you're doing portfolio and client fee basis. But even though the best paying brokers, paid brokers, start at zero January 1st, it's January 23rd today. So most of you still may be at zero. Not a good place to be. So we got to look at your pipeline. Pipeline is absolutely, absolutely everything. So let's look at pipeline. And from your perspective, I'm going to ask you all a quick question here again. I want to know what, what you think about your pipeline. Do you know what a pipeline is? If you don't, just that's okay. I, I don't see who answered what questions. Don't be embarrassed. Participate. If, you're, if your pipeline's good but has mostly small deals, okay. If it's unbalanced, we'll talk about what that means. If you don't know, we'll, we'll talk about that exactly. If you have high-quality deals, you know, consistently high-quality deals, first of all, congratulations. <laughs> it's early stage. Well, we can make them higher. We can make them better. So let's look at pipeline from that aspect. I'm going to move the video so you just get where we are. So again, if you can participate, look at the text, get involved, right? Let us know where you are so we can set across across our our uh, goals for sharing with you what's important. So mostly sporadic. Let's, let's go with most of you have sporadic. Some of you don't even know what a pipeline is. I understand that. So let's let's help you understand what a pipeline is and how you should look at it. And one thing we do, and, and don't worry, yeah, these are Massimo mobile screenshots I share with you. And, and it's not to say Massimo Mobile is the only answer, but to tell you, this is some things you must look at in your pipeline, because your pipeline is your bloodline. And if you say to yourself, well, look, if the, if the market leaders and the mid-careers, the successful brokers do this, maybe I should do it too. And, and you should. Always follow the successful folks. And this is how we look at pipeline. Yeah, you want to track your pipeline value, right? Absolutely. How much? How many deals are you working on? Are you a, are you a billion dollar broker? And that's the big thing now. If the, the, the guy's a billion dollar broker, we had a client last year who did two billion dollars in just one year of of asset value. Imagine that, right? But you're a small start. You know, you're you're just smart. Let's, let's think big. Let's let's get to a certain size of opportunity. Talk about your potential fees. You know, of all your pipeline, what's your potential fees? What are you working on that you could bring home? You know if and when, let's not talk if, but when everything closes, right, that you can put in your pocket. Very important. What's the probability of that happening? What's the weighted average? Really important from that aspect, the weighted average fees and, and how they're different. So think in those terms, and yes, cash flow. What's the cash flow of my pipeline, the consistent cash flow? You manage your finances as an owner, regardless of where you are in your career. New to business, absolutely. You got to know where your cash flow is coming from and when it's coming really important and a true pipeline should do that now <clears throat> you're starting out and you want to become a, a, a very successful broker here's the first thing you got to understand there's three phases to brokerage right there's a find find tells you you have a prospect or a proposal that's find really important stage and you're at this level where you're on your career you're out there finding new opportunities you're spending a majority of your time as Bo suggested prospecting and finding opportunities then, of course, you got the win. I got the exclusives, the representations, whatever. And now I'm marking the deals. That's the win. Stage two, the win. Find, win, and then fulfill, fulfill. Now, a balanced pipeline will have certain proportions of find, win, fulfill. Initially, folks, all you're going to have is find. I, I get that. And then you start getting some finds and wins. That's great. And actually, you know, find, wins, and fulfills. That's perfect. But your goal Eventually, it'll be six months, 12 months, you must have a balanced pipeline. Really important. Start today. Understand the difference. And there's a lot of factors that go into this, the size of deals, the average size deals, the weighted size deals. Don't worry about that right now. Again, but start small, create winning streaks, add some more later. That's where you want to start. So think about that. Now, also, I mentioned earlier, where you get your deals is really important. So from that standpoint, your source of the deal, how you get the deal will be vital to you five years from now, 10 years from now, 15, 30 years from now, believe it or not. You have to track every deal you get and where you get it, the size of the deal, the fee on the deal, all that will come back, believe it or not, start today of tracking your source. Now, at the Mossimo Group, we actually track, I think, Bo, it's 15 variables. Source is just one of them. But I'm sharing with you today the keys, some of the basic keys of pipeline creation and management. That's that's right. the key. And then create a consistent cash flow. And Rod, take a look at this fictitious fictitious example here. The average 
deal size of, of this fictional character is $91,000. Straight number. Right. Let's take a look at his average when he cold calls, when the source of the deal is a cold call. It's, it's way bigger. And that's, that's the kind of analysis this type of reporting can tell you. It can tell you if you get every time you get a referral from your company, it's like half the fee you normally get. You want to know that, don't you? I mean, the source of the deal is very Absolutely. critical, and it tells you where you need to focus. And, and Bo, great point, because we track everything with all our clients, and I could do the same report for every client we have. Every client we have, I can run this report. And I will tell you the two greatest sources of income. Ready? Cold calling or prospecting, number one. Number one source for income as far as average size deal. It, it just is. Number two, the same client multiple deals with that same client you'll get there you will get there number two source as far as highest income potential so just think about that as you build and this is really important once you figure that out you figure out now why not right call prospect multiple deals from the same client and then we get some client referrals going and some networking that's what we want now so there's some pipeline magic now a little higher end, but we can think about this in, in several ways. I'm actually going to reduce the video for one second so we make sure nothing is, nothing is uh, in your way. Think about this. If you capture this and command this today, it's going to help you down the road. It will. First of all, from a pipeline perspective, think about as deals move forward to the channel from prospecting all the way to exclusive, all the way to under contract, right? The probability should also increase. That would make sense, right? Status goes, goes further and further, probability goes higher and higher. Think about those terms. Now, from your aspect, there's some line we look at for knowing where your pipeline, the, the health of your pipeline. You wanna be in the green sections, right? So just start a deal out, low probability, makes total sense. You're down the road on a deal, higher probability. That makes sense. That's those where you wanna be. That's where you wanna be. And you gotta be true to yourself when you think about probability in your gut. What's the chance of this deal actually closing? Not when it closes, it has nothing to do with it. Timing's a whole different variable, but will it close? And your gut will tell you that. You'll learn as you do more deals. Now, if you're in the first red section, really early on in your career, early on in the proposal stage, and you give it a high probability, number one, you're fooling yourself, unfortunately. And number two, maybe it's your, your dad or a friend or your mom has a deal or, or a sister or family or friend, or, you know, as you're starting out, Maybe though that's that's the case and that's a valid maybe those could be green. Most likely not. And lastly, of course, you're going way down the road on this deal. So now you're you're you got negotiations, you're leasing, you got pending, but you're giving it a low probability. Now I'm gonna jump on the video for a second because this means something really bad. And what bad means is that you're probably about to be burnt on a deal. <laughs> now, Bo, have you ever been burnt on a deal? I have been burned on deals. Yes, I have. <laughs> and I have as well, right? You're, you're feeling really good about a deal. You're at a high profit, but you know, wait a minute, something, a low probability, something's wrong. Something's wrong. All our effort, our emotional effort, our production goes to these deals in this section. Bad place to be. So as you're moving forward in your career, as you're getting deals and they're moving down the pipeline, I want you to think in these terms. I want you to think in these terms, where they fit on the scale in regards to where they are and then look at them, and then you can manage your pipeline more effectively going forward. So to give you one example, someone that went to the program with Bo, one thing uh, that Nicole had to say uh, down in uh, Fort Myers was, hey, I'm now building a stronger pipeline than I ever could have imagined prior to the program. Point being here, she's following the tenants we're sharing with you, and she's building her pipeline. Okay, so we got some planning, we got some pipeline, uh, we got a little ways to go, so Bo, people are waiting. Prospecting. Right. Tell us about prospecting. Let's talk about prospecting. As we do this, I want you to think about how you're prospecting right now. But, so what we're going to ask you to do is another poll. Describe your prospecting efforts right now. You've got a targeted list of qualified prospects. I understand which approach creates the best results. I'm challenged differentiating myself. My prospecting efforts are sporadic at best or I have a consistent and comprehensive prospecting campaign. Go ahead and text in now if you would. Got a lot of shy people there, Bo. 
I got a lot of listeners too, and we're tapping for those who are just listening, those who are calling in. I know as many of you, we are polling the audience. They're giving us their responses. We're seeing their their re- results live, live, seeing where they are. And right now, the leading response is, "Hey, my prospecting efforts are sporadic at best." And and let me share with the new to business audience. That's the response we get from seasoned veterans and mid careers as well. It, it right. absolutely is. Okay, we'll start. We'll start the poll there, Bo. Why don't we continue on the, the ways we can prospect? Sure. Now, here's really the the first thing you have to do when you when you think about who am I going to be prospecting is you you have to know who. I mean, what's your specialty? What's your geography? You have to figure out who who those people are and create a targeted prospecting list of qualified prospects. And that's a that's a laser like high impact approach where everything is targeted and specialized to the folks you're there. So when you call, you know who you're calling, you know what they own, you know what their needs may be, or at least you've anticipated it. We also use letters as another way uh, to peak interest, to warm up, you know, cold calling, you know, you'll hear Rod, Rod say all the time, cold calling is dead. What we do is we create, make, create a tremendous amount of presence. We warm up the prospect with letters and other ways so that when you call, it is no longer a cold call and you can have much better results. We want to target what we do so that we can generate meetings. It's the whole purpose of a prospecting campaign is to generate meetings with highly qualified and motivated prospects. I mean, how good does that sound? The alternative is to just sit there, hope, and pray. Now, I'm a big proponent of prayer in every area of my life, but it doesn't always produce the kind of results by itself. You actually have to do something. And so think of your prospecting is it needs to no longer be this shotgun effect and throwing stuff against the wall and hoping that it sticks. It needs to be precision, targeted, laser beam focus. That will create the most results. Now, one of the keys to doing that, I'm sorry, go ahead, Rod. Well, you were talking about laser focus. So what are we, what are we focusing on? Well, we're focusing on who are the people that I want to pursue business with. Who can I contact and ask for the business? And specifically, what are the things that I can do to to incentivize them, to make them interested? And this is the main thing. Think about what you say when you call a prospect. And I'll tell you what the average broker does. He calls, he gets somebody on the line, he says, Hi, this is me. I work for this company. I've got this much experience. I've done this. Me, 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 me. And you know what? Nobody cares. Your prospect certainly doesn't care. They're sitting there asking them this question. So what? You can talk about what you can do and your experience and all these things to your blue in the face. But if you don't take the next step and translate those things into what actually benefits the person you're talking to, if you don't put it in terms of then, them rather, They don't really care. They don't. So we have to focus on them. And the best way to do that is to go to the radio station of WFIM, which stands for What's In It For Me. Everything you need to be telling them, communicating with them, the questions you ask them, the insight that you provide, the expertise that you demonstrate is all focused on what's in it for them. You have to communicate that. Give them a reason to continue to talk with you. Give them a reason to want to meet with you. And those are some of the reasons right there. Can you provide profit, savings, efficiency? Can you help them grow? Can you save them time? All these things are just some of the reasons why, why you have something of value. And you need to communicate to that to them in terms of them. Okay. So we, we got the focus on them. And Bo, um. I will tell you, I grew up in commercial real estate and then started practicing in the 80s. And of course, in the 80s and 90s was this great movie then play or play then movie now play again called Glenn Gary Glenn Ross and Alec Baldwin, right? And then he was the guy, the sales manager. Of the, if you haven't seen that kid, no, I, I use that term in a very uh, appealing way because I wish I was you and knew what tools I had. But you got to go see Glenn Gary Glenn Ross. Get it on video, get it on YouTube. But there was an approach there called the Ada approach. And what was that Ada approach all about? Well, in the movie, Alec Baldwin comes in there and he's given this pep talk. He's really kicking these guys in the rear end. 
And he's reminding them what they should be doing. A, I, D, A, attention, interest, decision, action. And he says something along the lines of attention. Do I have your attention? Interest. Are you interested? I know you are because it is close or walk. Decision. Have you made your decision for Christ? An action. Those, that's a little part of his speech. Now, we do the ADA approach a little bit differently, and it's mainly those, for, uh, those middle two letters there. We do, whether we're on the phone or whether we're writing a letter, a prospect letter to these folks, we want to grab their attention. And the way we do that is we write in terms of them, the same thing that we're talking about. It's all about them. You don't just lead off talking about me, 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 me. I promise you they don't care, okay? We get their attention by addressing something, some kind of challenge or opportunity that impacts them. And then we move to involvement. And the idea here is how does their life, their business improve if you're involved in it? You demonstrate what you can bring to the table and improve their lives, solve their problem, help them achieve a goal, whatever the case may be, whatever the challenges are they're facing. And then data. And here's Here's really the pivotal point of this approach is you're going to share data that's valuable to your prospect for free up front. Now, we haven't always done this, but there's this thing in our culture, and it's called a mental trigger of reciprocity. And what that means is if I do something good for you, if I do something nice for you, if I give you something of value, you are naturally drawn to respond in kind. So you just naturally want to return the favor. And so when you're prospecting and you lead with great value for someone else, for your prospect, they're naturally going to be more inclined to give you something that you want. And what you want is them to meet with you face to face. So if, if I'm telling you, if you just include this idea of the mental trigger of reciprocity in your prospecting, if you apply that this afternoon before you go home, you're going to see your, your results improve because this is a powerful cultural mental trigger that we have. You give something of value for free and you just watch your ratios improve. And then action. Give them a clearly defined action step. And I can't tell you how many new to the business, mid-career senior brokers, they go out there, they give a great presentation and they never ask for the business. They just walk out and just hope somebody calls. You have to clearly define what the next step is and ask for the business. And that's our version of the AIDA, the ADA approach uh, to prospecting. Now, Bo, is this approach only applicable to letters or phone calls and meetings as well? No, it's, 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 it's any, any mode of communication, this absolutely works. Grab their attention, share with them the positive impacts of your involvement, give them data of value for free, something that they didn't have before that's valuable to them, and then give them a clearly defined next step, whether it's sign on the line that is dotted or whether you're on the phone and it's, how about I pop by your office next Tuesday for about 15 minutes, or whether it's in a prospecting letter where you tell them you're going to call them next week. Whatever the next step is, in whatever mode of communication you're using, it works. Okay. Well, let's continue. This is great advice to go out and start right away. Here's a, a gentleman I know we've worked with in the past. Yeah, this is Jaden, who basically just sh shares with us the strategy shared in the New to the Business program had immediate impact on my business. And the reason we're sharing with that with you right now is if you take what we've talked about over the last 20 minutes or so and immediately apply that to your business, it's going to impact you positively as well. These methods, these best practices, they work. And we've proven over and over and again that, that they work. I've seen it work in my business when I was coached by this man. I've seen it work as I've coached others. It's powerful. Well, I appreciate that. And it does, it is accurate. So, but Bo, you're on a roll and my voice is kind of shot. So we're going to talk about the next P and I believe the next P is all about platform. So Bo, give us some more information on the platform side. Yeah, your platform should help you do a couple things. One, it should help you manage your time. It should help you manage your contacts, and it should help you keep score. All right, so let's talk about time management first. And the first thing I want to address is there is a fallacy in the commercial real estate industry that says you're not in control of your time, that you have to be at the beck and call of any of your prospects, any of your clients at any time. And I'm telling you that's not true. The truth is you are in control of your time. 
And the best way to get done the things that you know are the most important to your business is to use a method called time blocking. And it's where you, you schedule on your calendar an appointment with yourself to accomplish a certain task. So in this example, you can see there's some business development. Somebody on Thursday morning is prospecting during that time. And then on Friday afternoon, they're doing some business fulfillment. They're working on getting some deals that they've, they've found and won. They're getting them to the finish line. They're working on fulfilling that business. Friday morning is about market analysis. Now, here's the beauty of this. One is you don't have to ever really figure out on the fly what's the best use of your time because you've already thought about that and you've planned your week. But the real beauty of this is when somebody calls to knock you off your schedule, to interrupt you, to try to get you to do something that they want you to do, you have the option at that point to say, you know what, I've got an appointment right now. I'm free at two o'clock in the afternoon. Is it all right if I give you a call back then? It allows you to continue to serve your clients and your prospects and still get done the things that you need to do. This is time blocking. It's, a, it's something that could revolutionize your productivity a week at a time. And I would seriously encourage you to, to use this, implement this, this weekend, plan out next week based on this. What are the things that I absolutely should be doing? Block those out on your calendar and then honor your appointments with yourself. Perfect, and by the way, if you don't know what you should be doing, I think Bo and I share with you early on how to schedule your time every week. Block it out, block it out. Seasoned veterans, still market leaders, Block out time and possess that time and control it. Okay, so that's time. Let's talk about CRM. Now, your platform should include a great CRM. Now, I'll tell you, I learned uh, when I started in the business, my CRM was a legal pad. And then I graduated to Outlook. And then I moved on to some other legitimate, awesome CRM solutions. Now, Rod, let me ask you this. How often do you get asked, what CRM system should you use? You know, I travel the country. I speak quite often. Just got back from Dallas last night, Phoenix next week. And the number two question, number one is how I make more money. That's number one. Number two question always is, hey, what CRM should I use? Yeah, and I have an I answer that. that's common to your answer as well. Yeah, I get that question all the time as well. And uh, my answer is the best CRM. Is everybody ready? I mean, if we had a drum roll machine, because I'm going to give you the answer. The best CRM is the one that you will use. That's it. Whether it's Client Look, Salesforce, App2, Act, Act for CRE, REA, Daylight, or the one they come out with tomorrow, if you use it, it will, it will drive your business. It will make you more efficient. It will help you not let things fall through the cracks. It will, manage, it will help you manage your time. You can time block in the calendar functionality in any of these CRM solutions. It's, it's powerful. As a matter of fact, I don't know how anybody runs their business without an effective CRM solution. And what we talk about in the New to the Business program are what are some best practices on how to use a CRM solution, whatever the fact that may be. Okay, so here's the triggers to CRM. What Bo is sharing with you, and it's true. Look, Bo, you know, here's a question. I'm new to business. Uh, CRMs could be costly. They could be a monthly cost, a set cost up front. You know, let me, let me get some, let me get some you know, progress first, and then I'll invest in the CRM. What do, you, what do you say to that? Well, my answer to that is, if you want to make it in this business, you need to treat it like a business. Business have investments, expenses. And if you want to make sure that you're at a competitive disadvantage, then don't invest in a CRM. And that's the best way to make sure people are beating you. It, it's it's an okay. So if you want to <laughs> so if you want to solidify your be. failure, don't get a CRM. <laughs> that might have been a little hard. Okay, so I believe in these. Yeah, but if we we do. And look, the, Outlook is not a CRM. It, it's just not. It's an electronic Rolodex. And if you don't know what Rolodex is, you may be young. Go go Google it. But a CRM is certainly a tool that could use. And actually, it should create and generate commissions for you. It, it just should. So there's another element, though, Bo, and that's really keeping score. So tell me about keeping score. Yeah, well, your platform should allow you to track things. And let me just ask you a question. How on earth do you know if you're winning if you don't keep score? I mean, I keep the book at my sixth grade son's basketball games. And the reason we do that is so that there's no question about who won the game. 
And you can't know if you're winning if you're not keeping score. And, and beyond that, we understand that what gets measured gets done. And if you layer on accountability and coaching on top of that, we understand that it gets done and it gets done faster. And so this, what, this is what the Masa Mobile provides as way of a scorecard. As you're inputting all your metrics to these goals we talked about, how you're spending your time, what prospecting outputs you're doing, it creates a scorecard for you. And I will tell you this. One time I had somebody give me a call and say, you know, Bo, this isn't working. This isn't working for me. This is, I'm not making any money. And so I pulled up that client's scorecard. And, and you know what the scorecard said? He's not making any money because he's not prospecting. He's not spending his time correctly. And so he's right. The program absolutely doesn't work if you don't work it. If you don't follow these guidelines, it won't work for you. And he proved that for us. But the scorecard tells the story because the numbers don't lie. Okay. Okay. So tell me about David. So David shares with us, and he was one of my first new to the business clients. I was looking for a program to help me start my career strong and fast. And this platform did that for him. And it can do that for you too. Okay. Well, Bo, look, it's almost four o'clock. We spent almost an hour. We got some time to get started, but let me apologize to everyone. What happened was we had a webinar. We've sold out. We have a second one now. And after the first webinar, Bo and I got together and said, let's give more. Let's just give more. So this is going to take another 10 to 12 minutes. So if you can bear with us, 10 to 12 minutes, I promise we'll give you more information and, and, and get this done. So, so perfect. So let's move forward to the, the, the final P. And the final P really is you know, the partner, the, the partner side. And as we suggested, there are, there are three partners, right? You have a mentor, a senior broker, potentially, and then a coach. A coach is another potential partner. Now, it'd be great if you had all three, right? At least get one. At least get one. If you don't get a coach, get a senior broker. If you get a senior broker, don't have that one, get a mentor, get a mentor. And so we'll, we'll break this down. And again, we'll provide you with this, this recording. You'll see this again. But a mentor should assist you in your planning, right? Give you some direction, help you as my coach. And yeah, I have personally, I have two coaches and I have three mentors, not including Bo. Bo actually mentors me on a lot of things that I just don't understand, social media, right? Now, that's one person, Bo mentors me. Your mentor may be younger than you. Some of our new to business clients, I believe, Bo, we had new to business clients that were in their 50s and 60s. Is that correct? Absolutely. Yeah. In every group. So your mentor may be, every group. So your mentor may be younger than you. That's okay. They should provide guidance, but they should have some level of experience in, in your field of interest. That's ideal. And they should have some experience in commercial real estate. Now, if a senior broker, becomes your your partner right they should direct your plan they're going to give you direction and just me you know your plan but still direction they should be reviewing your pipeline right they should be generating opportunities for you right you work with them you work not necessarily for maybe sometimes for it depends on the relationship the compensation the structure it completely depends and then of course you may you may share in potential fees there you may put down the road so that's a, a senior broker relationship uh, beyond that, though, is the coach, and the coach will assist you in the planning. We, we will, if it's us or anyone else, we'll assist you in, in creating your plan. We'll establish goals with you, not for you. If we establish them for you, then they wouldn't be your goals, would they? But we'll establish goals with you, and then we'll have a vested interest in your success. Absolutely. And any coach, us or anyone else, they'll absolutely hold you accountable, and accountability is key. I mean, uh, every Monday. I'll tell you, every Monday I got on the phone with one of my coaching clients who's making tens of millions of dollars. And believe it or not, by 20% of that call is accountability. The rest is strategies and tactics and, and direction and adjustments. Accountability, even for those making multiples of millions of dollars. You need to be accountable as well. And of course, you want someone who's experienced in commercial real estate. You know, having a business coach is great. Having a commercial real estate coach who understands what you have to go through is much, much more important. So <clears throat> let me share with everyone on the call. We have scores of folks in the call now. Uh, it's actually rising, Bo. The number of tweets in the call continues to rise, which is pretty wild. And those who just joined us, we will be recording this. We have recorded this. You will get the recording. Let me uh, show Bo's lovely face, not mine, but Bo's. <laughs> he, well, for the next five minutes, I'm going to share with you, and Bo's going to share with you what we do at the Mossimo Group. And it's completely transparent, full disclosure. If you got what you want, you're saying, great, I got the tools and tactics. I'm ready to go now on my own. Great. Have a fantastic weekend. We'll follow up with an email 
and we'll send you the recording. If you want to hold on, I'm just for five minutes. I'm going to show you what we do with the Massimo Group, how we do it, and give you two, not one, but two um, bonus options, offerings is the right word, to invest in yourself, or if you're a broker, invest in someone on your team. So here's a little about us. First and foremost, um, you know, we don't train. There are some great trainers out there. You know, you know who they are. We know who they are. They come in, they give you a presentation, and then there's hope that you implement. Most people don't, by the way, but we coach. You know, we have a specific process, but we'll reiterate that today. We have a plan, and your coach is your partner, and that will lead to your production and ultimately your, your ongoing performance, right, that leads to more and more production. That's what a coach does. Now, Bo shared with you earlier, peers, and by the way, you can go to our website, massimo-group.com, look in testimonials. You'll see all the success stories and peers and what they said, new to business is there. For brokers, owners are there as well. They're there for you to review if you wish. But again, those that go through the program, complete the process, absolutely find it invaluable in their launch of their career. Now, there are certain metrics we're going to hold you to. These are minimal metrics. Bo talked about that. But Bo, what we're going to ask you to do next is share with them the, the program itself and really what's involved. Bo, can you take that, please, please? Yeah, so this is, um, this is broken up into a series of calls, 24 sessions over the course of about six months. That's meeting weekly on a Monday afternoon, unless you're on the Pacific Coast, and it might bleed into late morning. But this is the only program that the Massimo Group provides that meets weekly. And so every Monday afternoon we get together and we go through these, uh, these tenets of the program that, that Rod was sharing with you earlier, the basics. We, get it. we take a deep dive into prospecting. We talk about understanding your market. How, how can you accelerate your, your ascent to the dominant market knowledge expert broker in your, in your market? How can you do that as quickly as possible? And we'll show you how. Then we get into the essentials of, oh, what happens if you find and win the business? And we got to understand the lease. We got to understand the art of the deal. We got to understand the best practices like we were sharing with you before on how to use a database and how to make it uh, produce, uh, produce for you. And then at the end, we set up the success plan. Okay, we're talking, we talk about how, how do you create your market presence? How do you become a resource not just a deal slamming broker, but how do you become a resource to your client so that they want to come back to you over and over and over again? And we take a look back and figure out and what were the, the two or three key things that you learned throughout this process and what are you ready to commit to for the next six months, the next year, the next five years of your business? And, and the key also, you know, this is like drinking out of a fire hose. And so Rod very astutely built in about five sessions where we pause, we review, we take questions, we talk about as a group what struggles are we having in our business, that which, which allows us to incorporate the collective wisdom and experience of the entire group. It's a very powerful thing. And that, that gives you in a nutshell, a very quick picture of what the group coaching new the business program looks like. And it all is built on the Masa Mobile platform. It's a cloud-based system. You can log on and enter in your metrics from your phone, your tablet, your laptop, your desktop. Um, you, you can get to it 24-7. It tracks everything. It gives you this valuable pipeline that gives you analytics on your business, things you would never know otherwise. Uh, there's also the Masa Mobile online community that you can participate in. And also want to mention that for the brokers, we've got we've got brokerage firms that put all their new to the business folks through our program and the brokers, the owners, they have access to their new to the business um, brokers accounts, so to speak. So they can see, they can, you know, see their progress and, and how they're progressing. Now, I just want to remind you, this works on average, those completing this program, secure a pipeline value and access of $165,000. It's a powerful thing. That is something that could be said about you six months from now. And so what we want to do is we want to invite you, and Rod here in about 10 seconds is going to share with you an incredible offer, nothing, we've never done anything like this before. But we want to invite you to invest in yourself, lay hold of this future that could be yours, 
and and join us for this next new to the business group. Okay, Bo, thank you so much. And you know, I, I love about Bo is I, I'm, I'm a I'm extremely fortunate to have Bo as part of a part of our team here at the Mossimo Group. I I, I can't share with you enough uh, how valuable a Bo is to me, my family, our company, and, to, and Bo and I've known each other for. Bo, how long have we now known each other? Is it, is it ten years? It's probably getting there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. In fact, I think it's almost ten years now. So a decade of Bo, and you all can have a good six months with Bo if, if you if you decide to invest. So here's a couple things we're going to offer to you. First of all, you see there's hundred dollar bills out there, and there's a number of them. So for the first twenty to sign up, our groups are twenty people strong, and I will tell you the first group is pretty full right now. But if, when we get there, not if I know we will, we we may do a second group, but. Right now, the first train to sign up before, and I think we know the exact date. Bo and I talked about it. We're going to give you it till by, by Wednesday, January 28th. Correct, Bo? Is that the day we're going to give them till? That is correct. Not that I'll wait that long because the first 20 you're going to hit pretty quickly. I'll, I'll share that with you. But I'm going to do this. Uh, the program this year costs $500 a month, $500 membership fee for investment of $3,500 per, per participant. Bo has convinced me, my business director, Vince has convinced me, Rod, go back to 2014. You know, it's only January. Don't increase the fees. I increase fees because the demand is so high. We only have one Bo, and he's the best at this, at coaching this, and he only has certain slots. But Bo is open and said, no, let's go back. Let's go back and reduce the, reduce the investment. So let's give everyone $700 of savings. So $700 in savings. If you're the one of the first 20, and you'll know right away, to register for the program by January 28th. That, that's the direction we're going to go in. Now, I think that's you think a 20% reduction in our investment that we have in our model. Say, you know, let's get this thing filled up. We, we want to give this to everyone. We want folks to advance. Because you look at some folks in the screen. I look at David Gellner. I have go back, Bo. He now moved on to another coaching program. And he's doing phenomenal. He's growing and growing. And that's what we love to see with our, with our clients, our members, we call you, by the way. Uh, but let's do one other thing. Let's take the 20 in the group and let's say, okay, let's, let's start with that 20, put, a, put the names in a hat. So if you register, you have a 5% probability of us coming to you and announcing to you on the first call, and we'll go through the first call, um, that you get it at half price. We're just going to say half the investment is yours. We'll reduce it right away, and we'll, we'll disclose that on the first coaching call, if not prior to uh, the first 20 that sign up. One of you will get that for half the investment. So what we're sharing with you here, and I'm going to reduce our videos for one second, is all the modules, the 24 weeks, all the verticals we provide, the five sessions, right, the, the master mobile, all that, all that for an individual investment of, what is that? For $2,800 per person. Now, the return on your investment, think about that. You leave with a pipeline that as of today is averaging $165,000 of potential value. What does that mean to you? What does it mean to your broker? What does that mean? Of course, don't forget this. What we share with you, you get to use yourself, yourself going forward every day. So what that means is it's not just a tip for six months. It's the return on your investment every month thereafter. That, that's what it's all about, the return on your investment every month thereafter. So let's get some, some specifics here. Um, we'll have an introductory call, and our first introductory call will be next Friday. There's no date there, but next Friday, January 30th to 2.30. So those who register, put in your calendar. I'm going to do it. 2.30 intro call to get started. And then the coaching will start the following Monday on, on February 2nd. The first true coaching call and time to be determined. We got to look at the, the demand. We got to look at both schedule. We'll get your time. We'll be on Mondays. Every Monday, we're going to have a call. Now, we only have, we only have, I believe, 20 seats available, right? And, Bo, we're going to fill them up because I know from the first webinar, that started filling really quickly already, just an hour ago. But here's what I commit to all of you I will get you, I will get you a link to the webinar, a link to register everything by the end of my day today, which it may be two in the morning, it may be in the next two hours, but I will get you a link to everything going forward. If in the interim you're saying, you know what, Rod, 
Bo, I'm ready to go. Let's get started. You see the number there on the screen. And for those listening, 800-517-5542. 800-517-5542. You know, Bo, I've never felt as commercialized as I just did right then. That's why I'm <laughs> With the radio. <laughs> That was that. It's just not me, folks. <laughs> but uh, extension one one five. Talk to Vince. Email Vince. I know a lot of folks in the first webinar called Vince right away. Said sign me up. So that's that's the urgency to get signed up by Vince. So that's what you need to do going forward. Questions, please. Just because of of what's going on right now and in, in in our practice, get them to Vince. He'll help you from there. But here's what I'm gonna do. But I'm gonna stop sharing. I'm gonna go full screen with us both so everyone can see. You, right, which is important. Me, which isn't very important. But, Bo, we have a bunch of folks. They've been with us. Everyone's been with us. They haven't hung up for most of the call. So we got scores of folks left. What's the, what's the parting shots, the parting thoughts, Bo? Well, here's my, here's my final thought is we've been able to figure out and help over 100 new-to-the-business brokers start exceptional careers. I don't believe that anybody on this call desires or wants to just be average in this business. And to do that, you need to make some sacrifices and you need to make some commitments. And I would encourage you today to make the commitment to have an exceptional career instead of an average one, to become a top producing broker, to leave this moniker of a new to the business broker behind as quickly as possible as you establish yourself and move scores of deals through your pipeline as quickly as possible. And, and we understand the deal flow in commercial real estate isn't hyper fast, but what we want you to do is to continue to be able to find business, win business and fulfill business so that you can be a success in this business for years and years to come. And we think we know how to, how to help you get there. Okay. Well, um, there's a couple of questions and I'll answer all those. Uh, but here's my parting shots and I'll answer the questions. I, I shared with you earlier the view of this, and that is a what we call the Massimo money clip, right? And and it's empty. And the goal of the new to business brokers program of all our coaching programs is to not fill this up. Heck, it doesn't fit that much money, right? We want to bust it wide open. We want to bust it wide open. Massimo is not named after Rod Sana Massimo. It's named because Massimo means the maximum, the most, the best. And we want you to maximize your position and maximize your commissions in the market. And that's what the new to business program does. Um, I will answer some questions, Bo. I know you're probably uh, typing the answers as well, but some folks who want to share these, where do you get that $165,000 pipeline number? Here's how we're a coaching company. We have a cloud-based system. We can track every number of every client going forward. We can segment them by program. So I took my new to business clients, I looked at their pipelines. I saw what their value was, and Bo will share it. And Bo, we kicked out some big numbers, did we not? We did. We had a, a couple that have just absolutely blown the roof off, and it really started to skew the number. And so we took off like those top stratosphere, absolutely killing it, folks. And and that's a solid number, one hundred sixty-five thousand. Yeah, we, we, you know, we will always stand by our numbers. We're numbers oriented, and that's where the number comes from. You leave the program on average. Now, we're saying the goal is 50,000. We start again, start small, build winning streaks, move up. You complete the program, you do the work, that's what we get. So, Bo, I cannot thank you enough, not only for your tutelage and your mentorship of myself, but your continual enhancement for all our clients particularly in the new to business field. I know you work with many clients and propelling their business forward. You are certainly the best. Um, so thank you for your time. Um, thank you. It's an honor to work with you. And well, I, I you know, despite the, the, the role and poll results in our first question, I, I do want to thank our audience. <laughs> Everyone, you're investing the time today to move your business forward. If you don't, retain us as your coach, if you don't get a mentor, if you don't get a senior broker, at the very least, take the information we share with you today, implement it in your practice, and you will see results immediately. Until then, this has been Rod Santamosmo on behalf of Bo Barron with the Mosmo Group. We'll talk to you soon. Take care. Bye-bye.